young Cuban Americans now have the chance to reconnect with their roots. Annenberg Media film critic Monica Castillo spoke with our producer David Merrill about what it's like to go back to a home you've never known. Monica, you just went to Cuba, to Havana for the first time, uh, for the Havana Film Festival, is that right? It was. Um, very first time. I hadn't gone before. Um, I grew up in Florida, and my entire family is Cuban, mostly, and uh, we just I had our reasons for not going before. It had been really difficult. Um, only my grandparents had been able to go back to visit their siblings. Tell me a little bit about meeting your extended family for the first time. What was that experience like? So I stayed with a great aunt of mine, and I met many cousins while I was there. Um, it was very emotional. Um, many of us hadn't really contacted each other other than, you know, a few emails or Facebook messages. Um, my mother and my grandmother uh, usually sent photos to them so they knew what we looked like, and we would get photos back so we knew what our cousins looked like. But actually talking to them is very difficult, either because it's so expensive to call Cuba or because uh, internet is still very limited on the island. There's very few people who are allowed to have internet in their homes. Uh, so meeting them for the first time, some of it was very emotional. Some, uh, a great aunt, another aunt of my mother's cried when she saw me because I looked so much like my mother. Interesting. So uh, now you've been somewhat critical of the media's portrayal of uh, the reestablishment of relations with, with Cuba, um, saying that uh, it hasn't really given Cuban Americans the voice they deserve. It's both Cuban Americans and Cubans. Uh, I think the media narrative is really obsessed about the tourism aspect of it, the United States interest of it. But there's a big number of Americans who are Cuban Americans that are going to be affected by, you know, the release of travel and they still have relatives on the island like I do. Those relatives are going to be potentially adversely affected. Um, we're starting to see now that there's shortages on the island because there's just not enough supplies. And that's not being talked about. Uh, there, there's more articles about different cars and where to stay and sites to see while you're in Cuba, but there's not a look into the economic realities of what happens when um, potentially millions of people are now going to come to an island that had been so restricted and so short on supplies. Sure. Now, it's always been a dream of mine to go to, to go to Cuba. I know I'm not the only one. I'm really fascinated by the fact that it was so isolated for so long. What are, if you, could you give me some tips on how to maybe visit Cuba responsibly? Um, I don't think we have that in place just yet. I don't think the government has those kind of systems in place to make sure it actually trickles into the community. Um, my advice would to try to be stay in private homes or so to make sure that money goes straight to other Cubans. Um, there are some Cubans that are going to be able to make money off of the tourism, whether it's the taxi drivers, whether it's um, the people who have small restaurants in their homes and things like that. And I would um, advise people to educate themselves about the two different currencies on the island. So President Obama's decision to reestablish communications with Cuba has been kind of controversial, and part of that is due to some human rights concerns. What can you tell me about that? Right, so the Cuban government is still persecuting people, and um, actually hours before President Obama visited Cuba, there were a, there was a large protest, and the government came out and beat and jailed people. And one of the sad part is about the media narrative being so positively focused, it's not looking at the negative side of what that administration has been doing. So it's a very one-sided narrative, and I wish that it was a little bit more fairly covered. Yeah, and so um, Raul Castro, uh, during the press conference, famously said, you know, give me a list of names of these political prisoners. I'll release them today. Have there been any developments on that? Uh, very few have actually been released is what I've heard, but obviously the, the jails aren't empty, so we would have heard about that. Um, there's still folks out there, and I wonder if there's almost too many names to name, if there are just a lot of innocent people that now have records on the island because of that. Well, Monica Castillo, thank you very much for coming by. And uh, if I do go to Cuba very soon, I'll give your aunt a call. Maybe she can let me stay with her. I'll let her know. Great.